Hello and welcome to another Reveal tutorial video. So in this video, I'm going to show you the motion of the robot. So we are going to use stitch mode and then teach the motion of the robot. And after that, I'm going to use the robot to demo the play field for you so that you can have a better idea on how to complete the track. So let's get moving. So the limits of the servos, as I said in the previous video, is something like this. So for this motor, it's the same for all four limbs. For this motor, is something like this. 90 degrees movement. And then for this motor, it's something like this. 180 degrees. Like so. Okay, so I already set the servo limits for all the servos on this robot. So I'm going to just go straight to teach mode. Now, on how to move forward, the, move, the first motion we're going to do is moving forward. So I move it to the position first. So this is the first position. Frame one, teach frame frame one. Okay, now this is frame one. So this is the first position. Second position is something like this. You only move these motors, so you're gonna push itself up. How far you, how far you make your robot push itself up, it's completely up to you. If you push itself more, it'll have a better grip on the ground. But you can just choose to move a little bit because if you just move a little bit, it'll be faster. It's all up to you. This is the second frame. The third frame is these mo these servos will shift back by 45 degrees. Of course, you can choose not to use 45. You can do 60, 90. Well, this is just an example. This third, and then the fourth frame will move back up. Okay. Let's see, you can land on the ground again. Then fourth, then that's it. So, this motion has four time frames. And then I'll run it. Something like this. One, two, three, four. So it's something like this. So I, I've already pre-made a motion, a sped up motion, because you already know how to use the real animator to speed up your mo your motion pro your motion files. So the sped up version is something like this. So I changed everything to 0 0.2 seconds. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about the concept. So you can see, rather than using four limbs as the con as separate contact points. The four limbs actually act as one contact point and then the second contact point is actually the belly of the robot. So rather than crawling something like it will push itself forward and then while the body acts as a base, as a contact for the robot and the ground, the four limbs will shift forward and then it will take turns pushing itself forward. So it's something like this. So it's actually a rather quirky way of moving. That is a very strange, very unique, very very particular way of moving. So there's something this robot can do is that it can actually strafe as well. That is move from left to right without turning. So now I'll show you the strafe movement that is like this. So I'll shift it to the first motion first. So let's right now I want it to shift to strafe to the left. It is my left and it is your right. So it's strafe in this direction. So this will be the first position. Wait. Something like this. So this will be the first position as you can see. Okay. Now well, I'll be using file two, teach, time frame one. Okay. This is the first time frame. The second time frame is the limbs will move downwards. So we'll be using the servos located at the belly first. Time frame two. Now for third time frame, all the servos shift by 45 degrees. And then now for the last one, servos will move back up again so that the belly can have contact with the ground. Okay, that's it. So it's very similar to the forward motion. It's just that now the now the now the limbs are moving to the left rather than to the front. So let's have a look. So this is how it move. So this one's slower. Uh, just like the previous one, I have a sped up version. Like this. Okay. So this is how your robot moves. Of course, you can also explore. This one is actually a very quirky robot. It has other ways of moving. You can actually make it crawl like a normal, like a normal crawler robot. You can also make it turn, but I won't show it here because I'll only show you what we need to complete the mission. So now let's move on to the playfield and I'll show you how to use this robot to complete the to complete the challenge. So the first thing that you will start is probably move forward to this junction. So whichever path you make, 
you always have to come here first. So I'm going to use my remote control. So normally a robot is going to move here. So it's crawling. And like I said before, you cannot use the wheel mode to move. Okay, so around this position. Okay. So from here onwards, you have two choices. You can go the further route, which is more straightforward. So maybe you can make a robot that's very fast and it can sprint all the way. Or you can use the advantage of having a sensor because it's. I don't recommend using the delay to time your movement from here to here. I actually recommend the sensor because it's more smart and more efficient, and also it's more accurate. So you might so you can make sure that your robot does not miss the junction. So I'm going to talk more about the sensor. So let's just say that your robot moves forward. So it's just going to be a straightforward sprint all the way to the end. So I don't need to talk much about that. But for here, let's say, like I said before, this robot is specially designed to complete this mission. So I have a sensor loaded on the left side of the robot so that it can always search for the junction. So right now my sensor is sensing, is sensing to the left so it can look for a junction. So let's say when it's here, you will see that there's a wall so it will keep on approaching forwards. But once this goes out of range, <coughs> it's no longer facing a wall it can start to move to the left like this. You're using a straight program, I gave it. Okay. So this is how you would want to complete your mission if you want to use a sensor. And that's the end of the video. So in the next video, I'm going to teach you how to use the real planner to write a program for it to navigate to exit through exit C. So because I don't think there's anything that needs to be thought about when you need to consider how to walk to exit B because it's just a straight, it's very straightforward, you just, you just need to write a program to let your robot move forward. But for this, I want you guys to at least as have a minimal a minimum requirement, I mean an idea on how to write a program to use the sensor to do something like this. So this is just an example. So you see, once you see that, so yeah, as you can see, once the sensor sees that it's end of the wall, you start to move to the left. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the real planner to write this program. And that's the end of the video. Thank you.